everyone, welcome to IUM Love channel for another Awakening Chaos Era guide. Today I'll be showcasing my team that I used to farm uh, the dungeon, Arcane Dominator, Queen of Tides. So in this dungeon there are 12 stages. Uh, let me show you my team on stage 12. So let me click. So in uh, Queen of Tides you can farm Warrior Sets, Curse Set and Revival Set. So Curse Set is the one that allows the person to have a chance to do a bonus attack using the default attack skill. And Revival Set restores 10% of the max health at the start of the turn or 20% if under 50% health. Whereas the Warrior Set uh, gives an additional 15% attack. So this is one of the easiest uh, uh, dungeons since uh, the Ace developers has uh, rebalance the Queens of Tides multiple times compared to the other dungeons. Currently, the Gemini, Dragon, and Witch of the Bean is still pretty difficult to do. So let me get back to here. Let me click one multi-battle. The reason I use multi-battle is to skip the ultimate uh, skill animation for each champion, speed up the time. So let me, let me show you the team first. Multi-battle. One, let's fight. So in this uh, squad selection, I have a Hecarim, a Rogue, the Turtle, Charles, and Valo. So uh, the team synergy here is quite important, where Hecarim is here to boost everyone's HP, the health, so that they can survive longer in the battle. It also benefits uh, Rogue since uh, his skills use damage based on his health, whereas Charles uh, deals uh, damage based on his defense and Hecarim has a passive skill that improves everyone's defenses as well so not only it improves their defense stats by 10% of Hecarim's they will take less damage and Charles will also deal more damage and finally we have the fourth uh, hero here which is Valu Valu here is to deal poison damage to the boss and the enemies so we can take them down much faster, especially at higher stages where they have a lot of uh, health. And here are the two spells that I use. So the first spell is uh, Gaius Renewal, heals all team members by 50, for 50% of their max health and grants them heal over time for 3 turns. This is especially important where if you do not have any dedicated healer, this will be useful. And uh, in order for this team to work, you need you need them to be in revival set. So if you do not have any revival sets uh, farm yet, I would suggest to replace a uh, rope with a champion called Rodira. Rodira is an excellent healer for this uh, dungeon. Uh, later I'll show you uh, the battle with Rodira as well. Let me show you with a uh, rope. And the second spell is the Water Prison, which applies stun on an enemy for one turn and removes all of their positive effects. This is quite useful to prevent the enemy from attacking you, as well as to remove all the buff from Queen of Tides. Because the more buff she has, the, the more damage she applies. Okay, so that's the spells being covered. Alright, let's see them in battle. So in this uh, battle uh, AI, right, I disabled uh, Valut's abilities, so he will only use his A1 skill. So his A1 will only, uh, will only place a poison debuff. He has, a, he has his ultimate skill, which is to attack all enemies, and the more, uh, the more poison debuff on them, the more damage he deals, but uh, having his default attack enabled only we will deal more damage to the boss. And for the priority for the uh when the, for the boss stage, you want to prioritize killing the right side minion first, then on it to the boss. Alright, let's see how this battle goes. So as you can see, I have right let me see what's alright. As you can see, uh when the enemy attacks uh Charles, he gains one rich and the more rich he has, the more uh, he will increase his defense stats. 
up to 200%. And that's uh, Hack Green's uh, ultimate skill, which uh, increases the ally's max health. And at any point of time where the enemy attacks any of my allies, Valut has, has a passive skill to apply poison on them. So it makes the run much more faster. The, the only person that does not have any revival set equipped on them will be Charles and Rogue, the turtle guy. So how does uh, Rogue survive is he has a skill that heals himself uh, every two turns. And as you can see, just now the enemy attacks the turtle guy, the Rogue, and he gains, the enemy received 3000 damage, true damage, which is based on his 10% uh, of his health. So the more health he has, the more damage he will deal to the enemies. So we are completing this, uh, the first two waves under 10 rounds. Now we are at the boss right here. So when the boss attacks, perform an AoE attack on any enemy, she receives one poison debuff here, as well as a retaliation attack from rope, 3000 damage. Alright, I'm focusing on the right minion because uh, he can heal the boss. So we, if we want to speed up the run, we need to kill this uh, minion first. Alright, the boss use her stun attack. And in order for Charles to survive, he will need to use his ultimate skill that provides the shield buff on himself. And also rely on the spell that heals him over time. So the more, the more attacks that the crab deals with this counter attack buff, he received uh, 3000 damage from uh, the turtle rope. So what does the left side minion does is he applies a counter attack buff to uh, his ally, which is the, the right crab, or apply to himself. So whenever the enemy attacks, they will join attack as well. So this will deal a lot, a lot of damage with the uh, counter attack buff. The the other work around to this is to use a champion, such as a Kalo or a decrease to remove the counter attack buff. If your team is unable to sustain with revival set due to the lack of uh, health and defense stats. So as you notice just now, Charles uses his. Uh, the spell prison that removes the buff on the boss so she will receive much more damage without the defense up protection buff on herself alright while Luke places the poison on the enemy the boss is now 63% health So to speedrun this uh, dungeon, Valu is the most important champion here, so you need him to survive the attack. Let's see who will go down first, the left crab or the boss. Oh, them is like relatively the same health, I think 31% then is 40%. It does the stun again. Not sure how the stun targeting works. Is it due to she prioritized on champions that has high attack compared to the rest? Yep, as you can uh, notice, she applies the shield, shield buff on herself. So if you do not have sufficient damage to break the shield, you'll be stuck in a limbo in this dungeon up to 50 rounds. If you're unable to defeat the boss within 50 rounds, the turn will end. So you need a poison, at least a poison champion or a champion we can deal high amount of true damage. The number in yellow, right, it indicates the true damage, while the red one indicates the critical damage. 
So with the assistance of rope, we are able to break the shield quickly. And with Charles in cross set, he is able to deal two types attack. Alright, the crab has, is down due to the damage from Rogue and Valu. They are at the round of round 24. Few more. I think the battle will end in round 25 if we manage to break the shield quickly. Charles is like 30% health. Luckily, he has his shield to protect him. If your choice is not strong enough, not, doesn't have high high enough uh, high enough of HP or defense, you can use him in revival set as well, which allows him to you know he can solo other bosses with a revival set such as the flame dragon. All right. So this is the so this battle took around about seven minutes and twenty seconds. Usually, uh, with a Sentis or Rodira, you'll take around 8 minutes. So that's the battle for this uh, 4 uh, champion combination. Let's see their years and their stats. So for the first hero, I have Hackrin. Here are Hackrin stats. I prioritize on having high amount of health, defense, and basically that's it. Just focus on these two for survivability. You can have some some more focus so he can taunt the enemy. Right, all the skills are max here. Just that it's not uh, ascended. So for the essential of a hacker, he needs at least another copy of, of, of himself here. So he gains another 10%, which totals up to 20% of the Bonus uh, defense to all and uh, to all allies. The first one was health only. You can get a hack green from Hero Synthesis, which is uh, here, the altar. Hero Synthesis, this one. Just don't uh, sacrifice these champions for food, but use use them to create hack green. This is Evelyn, CC, Valo, and Mulago. Mulago or Tusago? Tusago thing. Okay, let's get back to Hackrin's uh, details. So the skills are all max, preferably to be max, so you can ramp up the total mid charge max health quickly before the boss turn starts. So here are the gears. I have a revival set and terra set. Terra set uh, gives 50% uh, health, and revival set restores 10%. Max health and 20% under 50% health. So let's go through each of the gears. I will prioritize our defense. Looking for uh, defense or health. This is the helmet. It has some focus. It's not a great gear, but it's used to complete the revival set. This is the revival code. Chest plate for defense and health, which is quite okay. This is what I used when I started to farm. Uh, Queen of Tides starting from stage 10 to 12. This is the Terra Boots, health and defense. This is uh, quite a bad uh, item. Once I get a better item, I will uh, search for defense percentage with a health percent secondary stats. And this is the ring. We got health, resistance, and the main stat is defense. And lastly, we got a Terra Chain with a health percent main stat and defense stats percentage here. Defense percentage stats here. Okay. And he's fully glyph. So the glyph will give him additional health, 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 and defense stats. Huh? Some focus, attack, resistance, health. So you can see the total of the glyph bonus here. So do remember to lift them up so you gain a lot of benefits from here. Right, let's move on to the next champion, which is the Valu. 
So this is a uh, value stats. For Queen of Tides stage 10, you want to have at least 12,000 to 12,000 health to 1,000 defense. For Queen of Tides 11 and 12, you want it to at least 15,000 health and close to 1,500 defense stats. Or else you won't be able to survive with a revival set. This the first two wave hits pretty hard. And the skills are fully maxed out. And this is his trait, which applies accuracy down whenever, whenever he counter attack. And he also places poison on the enemy for two turns. Okay, here are the gears. These are the total bonus equipment stats. Let's go through each uh, gears. This is the weapon. We have health, defense, and critical rate. This is the helmet. Very, very nice piece. Got uh, double rolls on the health, critical rate, critical damage. This is the chest plate. We have focus. Focus is quite important for Valut because he's placing the points in the debuff. Got defense stats and health percentage stats. And here's the boots with the primary stat of health percent and some defense percent. I w I'm not able to get a good role on defense stats here. It will be preferably better with defense and focus. So probably if I have a better boots, I'll replace it. And this is a ring with a main stat of health percent and focus. Okay. And finally, we have the necklace with a health percent stats. Not that great uh, rolls. Okay, then lastly, we have the glyph. He is fully glyph out. The glyph provides him at least an additional 3.6k health, which is quite good. 600 defense. And no bonus to the focus. Okay, that's our second hero. The third hero will be Rook. Rogue, yeah. Rogue or Rogue. I'm butchering his name. <laughs> right, this is his uh, total stats. I prioritize on health and defense. And if there is possibility to get critical rate and critical damage would be better. So you can do more damage. And he has the ability to taunt enemy as well. So focus will be good. So this is his signature skill, retaliation. Counter attacks with damage equal to 6% of his max health, and when fully ascended, he deals 10% instead. And this damage is dealt is true damage, so this is the one that you notice the yellow damage popping up. And not only that, his ultimate skill combo chop also deals ultimate uh, true true damage. I think one of it does true damage. Yeah, I think it's this one. This one deals true damage to the enemy. And since he's not uh, in revival set, he has this skill to heal him up. Regenerates 30% of his max health every two turns when he uses this skill, trust. And this is his basic uh, attack that taunts the enemy. So if you have sufficient focus, you can also crowd control enemy with this skill. And let's move on to the next one, which is the gears. I only have two Terra sets, which provides a total of 30% max health. And this is the weapon, health, attack, focus, defense, which is quite good. This is the helmet, critical rate, critical damage. Does it have any health percent or defense percent? This is your chest plate, defense percent, health, critical rate. This, I think this is the gears that I got from the Adventure rewards. So this is the health boots with a uh, flat stats health and critical rate attack critical damage. This is the health ring with some focus critical rate and flat health. So uh, flat health is quite good for rogue since it boosts his uh, total health as well. So having a uh, primary stat of health, health percentage, and flat stats health is quite good. And finally, we have the necklace with the health percent. We have a health focus, defense, and critical rate. Alright, 
let's move on the glyph. He's also fully booked. The total glyph bonus will give him around about 4.7k health. Then our defense. And high amount of resistance also. Alright. That's uh, Rook. And finally, we have the another elite hero, which is Charles. So this is his total stats. We have uh, 20,000 health, 1.8k defense, and high amount of focus, around 57. We need around about 40% to 60% focus in order to land. I think 30% to 60%. 60% uh, is a sweet spot to consistently land the debuff or negative effects on the enemy. So these are the three stats to focus. Health, defense, focus, and finally the speed. So you can go first to turn the enemy. The skills are fully booked. So this is his uh, signature trait, commanding furry. Attacks dealt by this character, this bonus true damage equal to 30% of his defense. And this synergizes well with his passive skill shelter, which increases one rage upon taking a valid hit. So the more enemies hit him, you gain extra defense bonus stats per rage, up to 10. So he, once you have 10 rage, you will gain around 200% defense, which equates to around 4. 5,400, uh, 5, I believe. Total 5,400 defense stats on him. And this is the skill Absolution, which generates the large shield to protect him, since he doesn't have uh, any skills to heal himself. So let's look at the gear. He's in Curse Set and Vanguard Set. Vanguard Set provides him additional 15% defense, while Curse Set provides him with a chance to deal bonus attack. So he can deal more uh, true damage with his uh, defense stats. This is the weapon. Quite good. Got speed, focus, precision. Precision is to prevent the enemy from dodging his attack. While focus is to prevent the enemy from resisting his uh, debuff. So this is the helmet. Defense, let's start. So you will be preferably better if you, this is defense percentage. If you have resistance, focus agility. Then we have the chest plate, which provides a flat stat defense, the great precision defense stats, and resistance. And we have a health boots. We have focus agility, critical rate, critical damage, vanguard ring. We focus, critical rate, health, and critical damage. And finally, the necklace with health also. With all these uh, stats. So if you have uh, primary defense stats, he will deal much more damage. Huh? But these are my best items that, that I have at the moment. To form a curse set. And this is his glyph. A total glyph bonus provides him with an additional 4,000 health, 600 defense stats, and additional speed. Thanks for watching my video. If you found this video helpful, click on the like button. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, click on the subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. It will, help, it will notify you on any new videos that I publish on this channel. If you do have any questions regarding on this strategy, or you would like to share your own strategy as well on how to speedrun this uh, dungeon, uh, please do leave a comment uh, under this video so I can look at it. Alright, thanks for watching and have a great day. See you guys in the next video. Bye.